Okay. I call this meeting to order the Board of Trustees, Brown Independent School District, regular board meeting, November 6, 2007, 530 p.m. here at the Administrative Building, 1900 East Price Road, Brownsville, Texas, 7521-2417. Can we please stand up uh, for a moment of silence, please? And I'd like to uh, send our condolence to uh, A.X. Benavides, a child passed away, the uh, Tavares family, please. Thank you. Well, Sebastian Cantu, please come to the podium and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the Texas State flag. And he's from Aiken Elementary. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Honor the flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Let's give Mr. Cantu a round of applause there. <laughs> Thank you, Sebastian Cantu, from Aiken Elementary. Roll call. Dr. Arika Exabella will, will, will not be attending today's meeting, so I'll be presiding over it. And uh, we have uh, really the ones that are here, Mr. Cortez, and Mr. Aguilar, and Mr. Gavan, and the rest probably be coming in late. We'll go to item four. Recommend approving the agenda of the regular board meeting of November 6, 2007, with any corrections or deletions. Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Powers, members of the board. Um, there's going to be some changes under closed meeting. We'll start with first with closed meeting uh, personnel matters. Uh, item number 25, pages 152, 153, and 154 will be replaced with pages 152A, 153A, and 154A. Also, item number 26, page 157 will be replaced with page 157A. And item number 28 uh, will not be addressed tonight at tonight's meeting. We'll be deleting item 28. Uh, also, if, uh, if it pleases the, the board, I'd like to have a change of order of the day for a particular agenda item. I'd like to move uh, item A12 ahead of the superintendent's report ahead of A1. And that way we can get the gentleman out. Do I have a motion? So Mr. Aguilar, motion? Second. Second. Second by Mr. Gavon. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Proceed to item six. Recommend the approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of October 16th and 2007 with any corrections. Any corrections, board members, superintendent? As presented, I have a motion. That moves. Mr. Gavon, second by Mr. Cortez. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. We'll proceed on to A12. Recommend approval of, the, of a donation in the amount of $50,000 made by Mr. and Mrs. Johnny Cavazos. This donation is in addition to the existing Johnny N. and Nana S. Cavazos Athletic Scholarship Endowment Fund. Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Members of the board, it's indeed a pleasure to, to have somebody that has given money and continues to give money to our students. It's a great benefit to our district, and not only to our district, but to the students of the community. It's always great to give back to the community, and we wanted to recognize Mr. Cavazos. And, and I'll call on Mr. Sanchez to introduce Mr. Cavazos and, and Mr. Rodriguez. At this time, I'd like to call on our athletic director, Joe Rodriguez, to uh, make the introductions. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. M members of the board and superintendent, um, some years back, I approached the board, you know, to allow me to establish a scholarship fund that would be perpetual, an endowment <laughs> fund, and I requested a, an amount of $100,000. I didn't know how I was going to raise them, but at that time, I walked off the podium, and Mr. Cavazos happened to be in the audience, and he happened to wink at me and said, don't worry, I'll get you there. And... Uh, I didn't know what he was talking about, you know, because it's a setting something like this. And but within a few days, a uh, $25,000 donation came to the athletic department. We turned turned it over and, and established the beginning of the endowment. And sure enough, over the years, beginning in 2003, with this amount of a donation, 
to the district, it will accumulate <coughs> to $200,000. This is a perpetual endowment scholarship fund awarded to every student, one student at every high school. We did it, began funding it last year of $1,000, one to every high school. The way the fund is established, it will be a perpetual fund that where we, whereby we grant half of the interest and the other half stays and grows to the point with this donation we now presently have with given out five thousand dollars last year of two hundred and eleven thousand at the present time we expect it to grow by the end of the year for the interest in the amount to where we gave out five last year hopefully this year seven or possibly eight and it keeps on growing perpetually to where it will generate funds throughout you know, our lifetime essentially because it's a perpetual perpetual fund that will benefit the student athletes. Uh, I brought this fact out to the State Athletic Directors Association when we held the conven state convention here in Brownsville and they were amazed at, at the quality of people that we have here which we know in this couple of Johnny and Anna Cavazos who have graciously donated and recognized the um, <clears throat> recognize the, the needs of our students and, and have so generously donated uh, these amount of monies which will be a forever and ever thing and, and um, I, I don't know how to thank Johnny and, and Nena Cavazos for what they've done <coughs> except to, to say that at the time when I requested um, requested the, the um, the start of the endowment four or five years back in 2003 that I requested permission from the board which was granted and for us to put up a wall of a wall of fame at Sam Stadium which will go right uh, under Earl Sands and they will be the first people to to join that wall because of their contributions to the to the uh, athletic department in this in the student scholarship fund Johnny I want to thank you very much Uh, we want to go down, Mr. Cavazos, please go ahead and do, uh, speak, and then we want to take a picture with you in the middle of the podium here. Good, good. <laughs> no, uh, again, uh, it just uh, uh, makes my wife and I, you know, real proud that uh, we'll be able to uh, do this, and uh, we expect to continue uh, on this endowment. And, of course, for... I'd like to point out, Joe, that uh, we've been at it for about 12, 13, 14 years. Uh, we started out with $500 a high school. And then uh, there was two high schools, three high schools, four high schools, five high schools. I understand you're going to build another one. <laughs> well, all that means is $500 more. So we've been donating uh, uh, 2500 and uh, for scholarships in all the high schools. Still, uh, you know what Joe said, we, it was decided to get this endowment going. It was about five years ago. But uh, this past year, we, uh, we started giving the uh, scholarships $1,000 a student for the high schools. So we're real proud, and uh, with God's blessing, we'll continue. And uh, hope we can make it a lot bigger, Joe. Thank you. Through the years. Thank you. What um, Mr. Cavazos is talking about is that every year we have a scholarship uh, golf tournament at the end of the year. We call it Payday May because we invite all our coaches and teachers to, and, and to, to participate in the golf tournament. And, and Johnny contributes uh, each at that uh, tournament $500 for each high school also. And uh, when we get the six high school, we'll go from 2500 to 3000 That's in addition to the funds already donated. Thank you.
Let the record reflect Mr. Kalunga is present. All right. Yeah, before I proceed, any comments from the Board of Trustees? Mr. Aguilar. No, we just want to thank Mr. Cavazos. You know, this is what he's doing is very unique, a gesture. Normally you hear announcements at the universities, and rarely do you hear some at the high school, so we really appreciate it. And uh, we're very grateful for all his donations for the young people in BIC. Uh, let the record reflect Mr. Lehman is present. Um, it, <laughs> any other comments? Well, do I have a motion for 12? I move. We have a uh, motion by Mrs. Gavon, seconded by Mr. Aguilar. All in favor, raise your right hand. That's the $50 donation. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Unanimous. All right, we'll proceed on to item 7, uh, A1, recognition of stop on red, kids ahead, poster contest winner, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Powers, members of the board. Um, we're really excited about this poster contest winner, and, and I have Ms. Uh, Ms. Fox, yeah. go ahead and introduce this presentation, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez, Mr. Powers, members of the board. A couple of weeks ago, districts across the nation celebrated National Bus Safety Week. And this evening, Mr. Hector Chirinos, our Administrator for Transportation, is here to make a brief presentation because we had a state winner. Mr. Chirinos? Very good evening. I call him Buster now. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mrs. Fox, Mr. Board President, Mr. Gonzalez, board members, ladies and gentlemen. I am Buster the Bus with the Transportation Department School Bus Safety Program. Before I begin, did you see me on KS KBSD TV during the School Bus Safety Week? Uh-oh. Did I do a good job? Well, didn't we both do a good job, Mr. C? We both came out on KBSD TV. <laughs> this evening, I would like to introduce Mr. Jose Hector Chirinos, Administrator for Transportation. That's my home. We are here tonight to recognize a very special student, Mr. C. Where are you, Mr. C? Take it away. Thank you, Buster. And good evening again. Uh, I'm here to present to you a student by the name of Sebastián Cantú and his, and his mother, uh, Ms. Yolanda Cantú. 
Sebastian Cantu, Sebastian Cantu participated in the 2006-2007 safety uh, bus week. Uh, poster contest while a student, he was at Skinner Elementary under the direction of the teacher, Ms. Gloria Cronis. He's now at Aiken Elementary. That's why the principal, Mr. Martinez, is here representing the school. Every year, students across the district participate uh, on the poster contest. The transportation department personnel selects one from each division. There are four divisions in that area, and we submit these posters to the state. At that time, uh, Sebastian, year 2006-2007, placed second in state. Keep in perspective that hundreds, if not thousands, of posters go in from all the state. So that is a great, a great honor, Sebastian. Congratulations on that. And on October 22nd, like Ms. Fox was saying, Sebastian and the parents traveled to the state capitol where he was presented with the award, uh, a nice trophy, well-deserved. And uh, the administration from transportation, I mean, Fox were at hand for this, for, for this award presentation. So again, Sebastian, congratulations. We're proud of you. Buster is proud of you. And uh, muchas gracias and congratulations again. Board, I present to you, Sebastian Cantu. The picture? Okay. <laughs> now we're going to go around and check in with, uh, <laughs> with the board members and the area superintendents. And Buster's going to go along. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Oh, wait, 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 before I leave. Okay. Buster. Bye bye. Once again, congratulations to Sebastian Cantu from Aiken Elementary and uh, make sure he gets a, a portrait of that for him for his own collection. All right, we'll proceed on to item two, ADA update. Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Power, members of the board. Um, as you will know, we're, we're, we're well on our way in, in, in providing the, the district into compliance with ADA. First thing we do is accessibility, which is the most important. We have an ADA plan, and we work diligently to to do this. We, as part of the of the bond program that we had, we had money set aside for ADA, and we're working with that money right now with ADA, as well as local money that we've pumped in for numerous years for ADA. We have a a crew of 15 individuals that work under the maintenance department that all they do is do ADA uh, compliance issues. So. Uh, and, and ADA is Americans with Disabilities Act, and that's that's what we refer to as ADA. At this time, I'd like to have uh, Ms. Fox introduce this presentation and, and present the update on ADA. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Powers and members of the board, uh, as Mr. Gonzalez said, the ADA, uh, we do have an ADA plan for the district. We were also, uh, some particular areas were identified in May of 06 from uh, TEA, the OCR visit, et cetera, and Mr. Arteaga today, our maintenance uh, administrator, is here to give some details on the progress of that. Uh, Mr. Arteaga, you also have at your place a booklet there that has all the information in it that Mr. Arteaga will be going through. Go ahead, sir. Good evening, Mr. Gonzalez, members of the board and the audience here today. Let me first begin, and I, that, uh, I tell you what, that buster is a real hard act to follow. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me first begin by letting uh, the audience know and letting all of you that are new to BISD know that uh, I'm very appreciative of uh, Mr. Gonzalez. I'm very appreciative of Ms. Susan Fox. And <coughs> of course, I'm very appreciative of the school board that we have for being proactive and uh, being understanding and providing us the additional personnel and the monies to meet the, the, uh, the needs of all the kids in BISD. As the logo so says, uh, we're all about students. Well, this board and uh, this administration is all about students. So I'm going to ask the audience to help me. I'm going to ask the, the board, Mr. Gonzalez, to please stand. I'm going to ask you to stand. Go ahead and stand. <laughs> and I think they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. And, I, and I'll tell you why, and I, I mean this with all my heart, because as I travel from campus to campus, you see that, for example, we have a new campus on one side of the, uh, the city, yet we have an older campus that is not compliant. And the way I see it is we need to make all the campuses compliant so that all the kids have the same opportunities to, to uh, be instructed in BISD. From there, let me move on and say that I've given you all a binder that gives you an update on ADA. ADA, <coughs> again, is alive and well in BISD because of the additional personnel and the monies that were given to us. In the binder, if you go to tab number one, tab number one simply is a list of the 243 citations that were given to us by OCRTA in May of 2006. If you look at the first page in that binder, it gives you a basic rundown of more or less where we're at on that OCR review. It tells you that uh, we, have, we were given, or we've completed out of the uh, 243 items that were, we were cited on, we've already completed 212. We still have 31 that are pending. The completion date for the ones that are pending is December of uh, 2007. Uh, we're at about 88% completion. So I think we're doing well in that area. If you want to, uh, to tab number two, I've given you a, rub, a, uh, a rundown of all the 37 campuses that, uh, that house uh, life skills classrooms. If you look at that tab, you'll find that out of the 37 campuses, we have only four campuses that are not in compliance. And uh, they're, they're in compliance in many areas, but they're not in compliance in, in one area where we have to enlarge the restrooms. Uh, and I think it's Hannah, El Jardin, Gonzalez, and Victoria. Moving on to uh, tab number three, and this gets a little more specific here. We, uh, we have some concerns at, at, uh, at one of the high schools, and I'm gonna address those concerns. If you look at tab number three, we have a list of work orders uh, that were brought to our attention. And I think we have 11 work orders. If you look at tab number three and go down those work orders, most of those have been completed already with the exception by four or five and I give you completion dates. For example, uh, work order number one there, November the 2nd completed, November the 2nd for number two. Uh, work order number three, that's a campus issue. Mr. Larcon will address that. Work order number four will be completed November the 8th. Work order number five will be completed, has been completed November the 3rd. Work order number three has been completed November the 3rd. Work order number seven has been completed November the 2nd. Work order number eight, uh, that's a campus issue. Ms. Alarcón will address that item. Work order number nine that will be completed November the 15th. Work order number 10 will be completed December the 30th. And work order number 11 will be completed November the 15th. Moving on to item four or tab four, this is an addendum to Homer Hanna High School. And again, some more concerns. And if you go to the last, next to the last page, on one side of that chart there, I give you uh, the issues and questions. On the other side, I give you the completion dates. If you go down the line there, for example, on cave building, we're asking for automatic doors. Those have been ordered. And it's not really an automatic door like you see at HEB or at the uh, supermarket. It's simply a little button that we, we install on the side of the door so when somebody's in a wheelchair, they press a button and the doors can open automatically. Those are going to be installed in the K building and the back entrance to the cafeteria and those should be in place by November the 15th. The student parking lot ramps, those will be completed by November the 29th. The bathrooms in the K building, that is a custodial issue and that has already been addressed by Ms. Alarcón. The uh, teacher's workroom bathroom in the library, that will be complete by November the 15th. 
The uh, same uh, bathroom needing air vents that will be completed November the 15th. The uh, height of the counter in the library is not ADA compliant. That will be addressed during the Christmas holiday so we don't have to close down the library. So by December the 30th, we should have a counter there that's ADA compliant. Uh, the next item has to do with the carpet and uh, getting new furniture for the library. My response to that is that the furniture issue will be taken care of by, by Ms. Alarcon and then we are taking care of the carpet. We should have the new carpet in the library by December the 30th. Moving on to the last page, there was an issue where a classroom was a little overcrowded, so I visited with Ms. Alarcon, and Ms. Alarcon was able to work with us and find a larger room. That class will be moved over to a larger room tomorrow, and we should be okay in that area. Uh, there's an issue there on a TV monitor. Ms. Alarcon has already addressed that one. Uh, there is a question there on what plans we have for the counseling center. I visited that one yesterday, that area yesterday. The uh, rooms are very small. I do agree with the concern. I'll visit with Ms. Alarcon on Thursday, and we'll possibly look at some other larger areas uh, that we can possibly house the counseling center at. There's a concern about a sink in room 121 that's being taken care of by November the 15th. And the last one is... Uh, we have what we call uh, Triple T located at the, uh, at the North Park Plaza. This house is uh, life skills students that are in training to go out into the, the, uh, the world of work. And apparently there's 31 students in that, in that area there. Apparently the classroom is real small. Mr. Rendon has already addressed that, that uh, situation. He's looking at leasing a larger area. If we do lease a, la a larger area, I, I did add something there and I need to clarify that. If we do lease a larger area, I added that we would go in and uh, renovate the place and add uh, ADA restrooms. However, this is only if the contract allows it. If not, my recommendation is that Mr. Rendon look at leasing an area that's already ADA compliant. I'll open that up to any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Artega. I'll go from the left side. Any questions, Mr. Cortez? Mr. Aguilar? Oh, I just have some comments. Uh, Go well ahead. done. I think, uh, Mr. Tia, you have addressed all those issues that were concerned at Hannah. Uh, congratulate you for a well job. Uh, a job well done. Thank you, sir. And anytime you give me congratulations, I have to pass it on to my employees because I have a group of employees that are very dedicated and they give 100% all the time. Thank you, sir. This is Gavon. Good job, Mr. Atiaga. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Lehman? Yes, sir. Uh, I have two. Uh, number one, out, uh, out of the $2.3 million, how much has already been expensed? Out of the puto, is that about the, uh, the, the bond monies? Uh, the ADA monies that have ADA been set aside specifically for ADA, that has nothing to do with bond money. Okay, that one we've already spent over a million dollars. And okay, that, those monies sure. were given to us last year. So we complied, we're almost <coughs> about 88% complying in ADA. And from that 2.3, how much is, uh, uh, how much additional do you have from, uh, from the bond uh, money? They gave us uh, two and a half million. Mr. Gonzalez? 2.5 million. It, that's correct, uh, Mr. Powers, Mr. Lehman, to address that issue. What we have done is we, we have, uh, because it is bond money, and we do get, uh, get uh, 25, we pay only pay 25 cents on the dollar in that. We're using that ADA money first. That's why we're stopping at the million on local, saving that. Hopefully we can do as much as we can with 2.5 and then come back to the local money later on. Okay, so we, we had the ADA money first. We had set aside 2.3 yes. from, from mm -hmm. 199. We still have it. So we're using 2.5 from ADA. So we have almost four, almost five million dollars. Yes, correct. To ADA, and we're <coughs> on target. I'm just concerned that Mr. Kalunga's name is mentioned here. Any particular reason? The, there's no particular reason other than that that he brought something to my attention, no. and and we wanted to make sure that he was covered. And 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 we, whenever some any board member for that matter. As it brings anything to our attention, we, we like it because we well, at least we can address the situation. Sometimes we don't see it internally. But I mean, we are on schedule. I mean, yes, I, I just want I don't want to make I want to clarify that that administration not being induced by any way by by a board member to show favoritism to any one campus. I mean, we are on schedule. No, so we don't show favoritism to any campus. What I do what I do is I prioritize work orders. And I look at the campuses that are in need, and we address all of them as we as we go through the day. At any one any one day, we, I mean, my crews are working on 40, 50 ADA projects on any one day, plus the additional work orders on just regular work orders. 
Of course, when somebody has a concern, I prioritize that, and yes, I address that. The Mr. Convini, Mr. Mr. Colunga, or anybody else from the community. Okay. And if I, what I do first of all is I go visit the campus. If I see that there is a need, I will address it. One of the reasons why Mr. Colunga's and I might be out of place, Mr. Colunga's name is on in the binder, is because in the memo that he wrote, he did uh, specify that he wanted clarification and he wanted completion dates. And I don't mind. I mean, that's what I'm there for. I'm there to serve the kids and serve you all and serve the public in what we do. I think that, that's, that's my responsibility. Okay. Well, it just seems like <laughs> Mr. Colunga was given a directive, and that's not the case. No, no not okay. the case. I just want to clarify that in case this gets in somebody else's hands. Uh, the other issue uh, would be then we are following Mr. Otten, the consultant's recommendations as to timetables. Yes, so anytime we complete a project, what we do is we have to take a pre and a post picture. We complete a project, we send it to Mr. Otten. He enters it into the website. And I, I think I shared with you all the last time I was here that we do have a, a website, ADA plan where, BISD. Uh, and I've asked you all that if you want to, uh, if you want to get into a web website, we'll share with you the information you need, and you can keep tab as to what we're doing right. and where we're at on. on, uh, on the I know, I know, it was uh, web driven, right. exactly. but uh, we needed a password to get in. But uh, for the advocates and, and the um, and those that are for the public can keep track of the progress that the uh, district, because we are 15 years behind schedule. I just want. To the, the public to know that, and, and this is an issue that we're we're addressing. So we're one million into uh, into expenditure, so we have another four million to go. Yes. Sir. Okay, and you do still have the 14 people on board. And I thank you very much for, for the 14, and I could use another 14 if you give me 14. Okay. <laughs> well, you can subcontract those out. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me explain something on the subcontracting. Is that I'd rather use my people and work them on Saturdays than subcontract because they can do so much more and they know the campuses and it just makes it better for everybody around it and it's a lot cheaper than having to go outside and subcontract. Mr. Colunga. Any other questions? Mr. Colunga? Uh, I just, Mr. Artiago, I wanted to thank you and your crew for um, the uh, response to uh, those identified items or, or concerns I had. Uh, as um, Mr. Gonzalez is aware, that those uh, concerns, um, as board members, we get uh, <coughs> complaints in different areas, uh, uh, and in ADA, it's uh, something that um, needs to be uh, communicated. I know we have an ADA plan. Uh, sometimes there's not enough uh, input from the, uh, the consumer or, or the, uh, the, the students and um, parents, uh, faculty that have to use the facilities, so, uh, I had submitted that uh, communication for uh, inclusion into uh, the, the plan to, uh, to see what could be done at that uh, uh, campus. And of course, it, it could be duplicated at other campuses if uh, other um, uh, students, um, faculty, teachers, uh, administration, any Anyone dealing with uh, ADA issues, uh, uh, if there's any need for uh, modifications or uh, changes in the facility, that they should uh, communicate it uh, to the appropriate uh, campus uh, administrator to uh, to at least uh, include it in future considerations for uh, the uh, district-wide plan. Uh, thank uh, Mr. Gonzalez for his uh, powers to the uh, uh, the inquiry and we'll, uh, just go forward with uh, other plans in the future that, that will uh, benefit all students. Thank you. Mr. Aguilar? <coughs> well, uh, I'm so glad that some of the students were moved to a larger classroom. Uh, many a times board members have brought to this uh, administration concern about overcrowdedness in a regular class, whether it was English or math. So now is the time that somebody brought the attention to us that there was an overcrowdedness in a special ed. I think we should serve, we serve all students regardless whether it's a regular class or special ed. So thank you, Mr. Gonzalez, for taking care of those things. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, uh, you did bring up the 14 employees that will be finished on December the 30th. Are we keeping them on board or? 
Oh no, this project will be completed, Ms. Gomez. On, on the, we 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 plan on keeping this one on board for many years to come. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. the idea projects will never end. It's, 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 it continues year after year after year. So, oh. these uh, 15 employees that you all gave us were not enough to be able to get it all done. Believe it or not, even new campuses that are being built many times are not an ADA compliant, even though they they they, they look at them through uh, the uh, uh, CNI glass. And for whatever reason, we <coughs> miss something, and then we have to go back and get it done. <coughs> They're great employees. I'll go ahead and end on this. I think uh, I want to compliment the past board members from 02 to our current board members. I think we have taken a proactive approach to ADA compliance. I think, yeah, I think uh, Mr. Klug and Lehman, we started the ADA with Mr. Auden. Uh, when it comes to safety and ADA issues, we, we take it seriously. And, and, and like you, I know Mr. Gonzalez spearheaded about three, four years ago uh, when he was area superintendent for operations to give you more employees, increase your department, because we do have a never ending insight as far as jobs going on here at Bay because those employees will always be needed. Bo bottom line, we're still short handed, but we're, we're in a lot better place than we were four years ago. And when I see here, uh, I just want to compliment your entire staff. I think uh, we probably, bar none, have one of the, the greatest maintenance department that can handle this size of the district than anybody else. And you have excellent employees. They know what they're doing. And it is true about you, Mr. Ortega, and your department, Mr. Gonzalez. If, if one of us call and we hear there's a safety issue or an ADA compliance issue, uh, your, your department, your staff is on top of it immediately. And I compliment you on that. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. You all have a good night, and I'd appreciate it. And I'll pass it on to my employees. Thank all right. You. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We'll proceed on. We'll proceed on to uh, A3. Public reporting of progress in meeting highly qualified teachers' requirements. Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Powers, members of the board. Of course, this has always been an issue about highly qualified under uh, No Child Left Behind, and we're glad to read we have a positive report. And I'll let Ms. Uh, Ms. Fox go ahead and introduce the presentation. Ms. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Powers, members of the board, by law, we are required to make a public reporting of the progress we've made on highly qualified teachers and paraprofessionals. So this evening, Ms. Yolanda Gavito, our certified administrator, and Judy Cuellar, the, the classified administrator, are here to make that report to the board. Ladies. Good evening, Mr. Powers, Mr. Gonzalez, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen. The No Child Left Behind Act of 2001 <coughs> requires all teachers in core academic subject areas to be highly qualified. The requirements to be considered highly qualified are that the teachers hold at least a bachelor's degree, be fully certified in Texas, and demonstrate competency in the core academic subject areas that they are teaching. An elementary teacher can demonstrate competency by passing a state certification exam or meeting the No Child Left Behind HOUSE criteria, the HOUSE criteria. HOW stands for High Objective Uniform Standard of Evaluation. A secondary teacher can demonstrate competency in the academic subject taught by passing a state certification exam, having an academic major, graduate degree, or coursework equivalent to an undergraduate major, or meeting the HOW's criteria. The No Child Left Behind Act requires districts to report their progress toward meeting the highly qualified teacher requirements. We are re pleased to report the following. BISD has met the following state targets as of October 12, 2007. 100% of our classes are taught by highly qualified teachers. 100% of our teachers are highly qualified, and 100% of our teachers receive highly, quali highly qualified quality, high quality professional development. Beginning with this October 15th reporting, campuses are required to amend the highly qualified teacher compliance report throughout the school year if the status of any teacher changes. Beginning with the highly qualified teacher data reported this October and beyond, any district that receives Title I funds and does not have 100% of all core academic subject area classes taught by teachers meeting the highly, qui highly qualified requirements will be required to do the following. Conduct a highly qualified teacher focused data analysis process that is prescribed by TEA 
and also maintain and implement a highly qualified teacher continuous improvement plan. Additionally, each campus that is not 100% must have a highly qualified continuous improvement plan on file with the district central office. The Human Resources Department, in collaboration with the campus principals and area assistant superintendents, has taken steps to ensure that our teachers maintain highly qualified status by screening all candidates prior to hiring to make sure they meet the highly qualified criteria. In addition, all proposed changes of assignment for teachers that are submitted by the campus principals are carefully reviewed to ensure compliance. Additional information and specific information concerning our district and our campus results can be found on the TEA website at www.tea.state.us slash NCLB. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Ms. Guaya. Mr. Powers, board members, Mr. Gonzalez, highly qualified status for paraprofessionals requires that all paraprofessionals um, show proof of a high school diploma or, of its, or its equivalency, have at least two years of college, which in the state of Texas is 48 college hours, have or have an associate's degree or higher, or meet a rigorous state or local test assessment, or TOPS, which we, we had here in the district. In 2002, the board made the determination that all paraprofessionals would meet the highly qualified status, whether the, they were required to by federal standards or not. So we have maintained that status for all paraprofessionals. For instance, parental involvement, PEAs, any that only are required to have a high school diploma, we went above and beyond that and required the college hours. So um, we are happy to announce again that we are at 100% highly qualified paraprofessionals. Right now, we have 900 paraprofessionals, and I gave you a chart just to show you quickly. 900 paraprofessionals, all highly qualified. In that breakdown, 319 have at least 200, two years of college or more, and 183 have an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, and 398 have the TOPS training. If you combine the two college, we have 56% of our paraprofessionals with college experience. So um, we're pleased with that. Um, and uh, <clears throat> right now, if you break it down, 92 of our paras have a minimum of an, of an associate's degree, and 91 have a bachelor's degree. We are happy to entertain any questions. A any questions from the board of trustees? <laughs> No questions, then, you know, great job. If I may, I just wanted to take an opportunity on Mr. Arteaga's report. As a 504 coordinator for employees in the district, I just want to take an opportunity to thank him because whenever we have a meeting and I call him in regard to anything, whether it be ramps, doors, whatever the issue may be, he's so quick and thorough, his staff and him to respond. So I just wanted to publicly acknowledge that as well. That's, that's beautiful, Mr. Thank Clare. You Mr. Much. Cabrito, thank you very much for everything you all do in, in personnel. I'm really happy with the paraprofessionals. That's the, they're going on to get their degree, which is beautiful. All right, we'll proceed on to number four, presentation 2007-BIZ United Way campaign. Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Powers, members of the board. As you well know, we are full partners with uh, the United Way, and we're very grateful that we are, and we take every opportunity to work with them because they help our community. And uh, we have done outdone ourselves, as they say in BISD, and I'd like to have Ms. Drew Brown introduce the United Way people introduce this presentation. Ms. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez, Mr. Powers, members of the board. Uh, we're unfortunate tonight because we have five highly qualified representatives from the United Way of Southern <laughs> County County who are here to bring us some excellent news about our, this year's campaign. It's a pleasure for me to introduce Raymond Cisneros, who's the United Way Board Chairman, Terry Alicone, who's the United Way Board Secretary, Sandra Langley, who's this year's campaign chair, Tracy Wickett, who's the President of the United Way of Southern Cameron County, and Nick Mitchell Bennett, who's the Resource Development Director, and they're here to talk to us and make a presentation. Thank you, Drew. Call me high quali highly qualified. It's stretching <laughs> a little bit there, but thanks anyway, Drew. I'll take that. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, Mr. Powers, thank you, and, and the board, thank you for allowing us to be here today to share the results of your of this year's United Way campaign. Uh, last year, when I was here presenting your results, uh, I was in awe of the, num the amount of money that you guys, all your employees, were able to raise for for United Way. 
uh, it was just incredible. And I thought to myself, man, how, how are they going to top it this year with, with times the way they are and so on? And I'm just here to, to gladly report that they did top it, that they only, they only beat it or they met it, but they, they actually did better than last year. Uh, last year's totals were uh, a little bit over $305,000. This year is $317,277.46. That's a, that's a great achievement. Um, your top five campuses, a little bit more specific, your top five campuses, uh, Pace High School had, had uh, 16,675, they gave the most. Uh, Rivera High School was one of the top five, Gonzales, Porter High, Hannah High. Uh, those are your top five campuses. Uh, but in categories, the top high, of course, was Pace High School. The top secondary or, or um, was Stillman, and then the top elementary was, uh, was Gonzales. So great, great, uh, great numbers there. Uh, one other thing that we measure also is we, we honor or we, 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 uh, we have, we, at the end of the year, we have a little founder circle booklet that we, that we have people in there that, that give over $500. That's $500 for a year. And last year, uh, the district had 63, we call them founder circle individuals, 63 founder circles, uh, donors. This year we had 93, so I mean, that's a great improvement from the 30 more people that gave above the $500 number. So that's great, great numbers. Um, again, we couldn't have done it without, without all of you, your support in allowing us to go on campus to provide, to do our, our presentations. I'd like to thank Mr. Gonzalez and, and all the board for allowing us to do that. Your employees, again, outdid themselves. They did a fantastic job this year. And uh, again, we're, we're, we're here to, to share the results and, and, and thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. All right. Let's take a picture with everybody in front. Right. Uh, yeah, and then we'll say some comments. Cool. We also have a big check that we could. Uh... <laughs> yes, I, I know that. <laughs> oh, and one last person I that uh, would like to thank that we always seem to forget her and but what she does for for United Way, uh, Drew. Thank you so much for organizing this every year. It, it, it goes so so smoothly from campus to campus. I think Drew. I don't think we had any issues this year. It was it was great. It was, uh, we go in there. Uh, when you all are starting your, your year, and uh, we just do it, I think it's like in a week or ten one day. One, yeah, one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very fast, right before you all are opening up uh, your campus. So uh, thank you again. What's the check amount? $317,277.46. All right. <laughs> Put it on there and take a picture. Take a picture, guys. Thank you, Mr. Santos, and I'll let you know that I've always said this. When times are good, it's easy. When times are hard, that's when you find out who really cares in their heart. So thank you very much. All right, we'll proceed on to more calendar. Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Powers, members of the board. Um, just a few announcements on the calendar. Uh, one that's not there, but uh, you need to take note of. Uh, hope all of you can make it this Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. We're going to have the dedication of the Murphy Center, John Murphy Center at uh, over there at, at CAP. And we're also going to have the dedication of the museum, the BISD Museum. It's going to be an exciting event. I invite all the public to go out there. It starts at 10 a.m. And uh, I was out there today. And I was just at awe of, of how much memorabilia we have for the museum. And I also, you know, 
uh, it must be Ray Arteaga's lucky day because his his group over there did an outstanding job putting it all together and building it. It was all, we didn't buy anything. We built it all, and his crew was the one that did it all. And I want to thank him for that. Uh, you have, please, uh, I know the newspapers here. 10 a.m. Wake up on Saturday and, and be out there and watch this mu the dedication of that museum. It's, it's good, something really fantastic to look at. It's something to, to if you have a chance to go out there, uh, even before Saturday, just go out there and look at it. It's, it's a fantastic place. And I want to thank Mr. Aguilar for spearheading it. Uh, it's, it's something that's that's really good. He's working out there every day. I, if I need to find him, I just go to the museum. He's there and. Uh, they're putting it all together. I think they're having fun while they're at it. Is that right, Mr. Aguilar? Aren't oh, yeah, you having yeah. a little fun? Volunteer, uh, did you receive my Pace Letterman jacket yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're saving that for later. For first seniors out of <laughs> first graduating class. Just joking. I still kept it. But there's some memorabilia. I, I couldn't. The only reason he gave it is because it doesn't fit anymore. No, it doesn't. Uh, no, it doesn't. Trust me. <laughs> but I, I saw some memorabilia from, from, from many years back, and I think it just brings a lot of joy to a lot of people just to look at it. And it's about BISD. It's not about Old Bronzo High School. So there's there's there from every from every campus, from every school. I think you'll, uh, the kids will learn a lot from it uh, when you get to see El Jardin when El Jardin was its own district, and see how it came incorporated with BISD. So it'll be something for our kids to really enjoy for many years to come. So if you have an opportunity to go at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Please do. I think you'll enjoy. Uh, you want to say something, Mr. Aguilar, on there? Go ahead. Well, and now that we're in the same topic of this, uh, I just want to thank my colleagues. Uh, we started three years ago, then we dropped the ball, and somehow I want to thank Mr. Gonzalez for, I guess, a renewal of the uh, the project itself, and he promised, he said, I'm going to give you a first-class job, and he has done. Mr. Leyva and Mr. Uh, Arteaga and all the crew that you're talking about did a fantastic job in the cabinet work. And not only that, but also in the offices in the old Ben Hall. And some of those offices, my goodness, if you have not been there, go by and see those offices. Excellent job that our maintenance department did. So, again, uh, I want to thank our colleagues who helped us uh, get this project going on, and especially Mr. Kolunga that said, uh, gave us a key word. It's an old building. We don't have to ask for public input. So. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember that, uh, Mr. Kuluga, <laughs> three years ago. And, and it is going to be a beautiful building, and, and dedication is there, and, and fine arts has already moved in there to the to the John Murphy Center. So I hope everybody gets to go. Saturday is not, that's not the only thing that's happening on Saturday. We also have a, a Veterans Day parade at 2 p.m. at Porter High School, starting at Porter High School. So I invite, uh, it's time to honor our veterans, and, and it, it's going to be a great opportunity to go out and, and to the parade and see the parade. Also that evening, we have a football game. That will be the last foot, right, football game of the season, the regular season. And it's going to be Porter and Hannah playing. And that particular night, we're also going to honor Joe Rodriguez for his accomplishments as HD for, for the state. So I invite all of us to be there and, and, <coughs> and for that presentation also. I uh, also want to just announce that on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, this will be our, our last weekend for, for football. So you haven't caught a football game yet. We have games on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So please, uh, and, and and when we get to there, and we have a team in the playoffs. <laughs> Congratulations to the Pace Vikings, and they will be playing. And I just was informed today that they'll be playing uh, the PSJ Bears. So uh, we'll be doing that on the, I believe, on the 16th or 17th. So Pace High School, I know that you're very proud of it, Mr. Powers, is in the playoffs. That's what, I'm alumni. I'm alumni. <laughs> Uh, also, the uh, next week is the National Children's Book Week. Please get out and read to the kids. I, I, I think it's very important. Uh, I know I've gotten numerous phone calls from different people saying, "Can you read?" Uh, I don't want to commit because sometimes it comes, you know, for time. But I will be at different campuses reading this, and I'll give them at least a 30-minute notice that I'll be there. But any board member is, is more than welcome to go out and read. And, and as a matter of fact, anybody in the audience or the public that wants to go and read to kids, please contact your campus principal, and you'll be able to do that. Because I did Bettis today at 1:30, and I'm doing Hudson next Tuesday. That is great. <laughs> That's good, and we really appreciate it. I, the kids really get, enjoy it. We also on the 15th have uh, the BISD. Fall Parent Conference for Hannah Rivera and the Lopez Clusters at the Brownsville Event Center at 8.30 a.m. If you have an opportunity to go, please do so. That's on the 15th. Also, uh, there's Thanksgiving is coming right around the corner. We will be off on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd for Thanksgiving. 
And uh, one last announcement. One uh, last announcement on on the board calendar is on the fourth. This year we're doing it a little bit early. On the fourth of December, the board meeting we will be having the tamalada. Our annual tamalada for for BISD will be on December fourth. Any questions? Anybody on the board has any questions? <coughs> Jumping up. Just letting the uh, administration know that I'll be calling a. a um, Facilities Committee meeting and a um, technology meeting towards the latter part of this month. Whenever you're ready. Okay. I'll also be calling the board workshop on the uh, benchmarks too. Well, uh, as soon as I get somebody to come in and help us with this presentation, we'll, we'll announce it to you. Thank you. We'll go on to public audience. Nobody? Yes? Ah. Start reading. <laughs> <laughs> Our next item on our agenda is, is the public comment period. This is the time for citizens, staff, and students to provide their comments to the board. Statements and questions from the audience will not be permitted during any other portions of the meeting, so please let, you, let us hear from you now if you have comments to present. To have your comments served tonight, your name and the subject matter of your comments must appear on the sign-in sheet, which is located in the rear of the meeting room. Each speaker is limited to five minutes to complete his or her comments. Uh, with all due courtesy, Mr. Sadani will strictly enforce the time limit. Now, you know that through your name in there, Mr. Sedania. Okay. <laughs> if a group of people wanted to be heard on the same topic, the board asks that they designate a spokesperson to avoid needless repetition. The board has adopted rules to preclude the abuse of open forum by and for example, anyone usually repeating the same comment or complaint meeting after meeting. All participants must understand if your comment in my judgment constitutes a complaint against an employee or officer, I will interrupt and ask you to stop and direct you to proceed to BIZ formal grievance procedures, that be DGBA, FNG, or GF local. With all those cautions in mind, we will now be glad to hear your general comments. Please state your name first, and remember, you have five minutes. Ernesto De Leon, uh, State of Tabasco, Flooding? What's that? This is correct. Mexico, state of oh, state of Tabasco, Alaska. Mexico flooding. There you go. <laughs> Proceed. <laughs> well, Good afternoon. My name is Ernesto de Leon. Honorable members of the BISD Board of Trustees, Mr. Superintendent, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to come before you today. As most of you have already known, the flooding problem of the state of Tabasco is undergoing. This is the worst flooding in Mexico history of any state in Mexico. Over 80% of the entire land area of the state of Tabasco is under, has been underwater for the last two weeks. Some two feet, some nine feet, nine feet deep all over the, the state. And if it was not enough, alligators all over the place, they're having to put up with that as well. However, there are three dams in the neighboring state of Chiapas that are over their storage capacity. They're beginning to let water out to keep the dam from busting. This water, unfortunately, goes directly to the rivers that flow into the area of Hermosa, Tabasco. There are still some 200,000 people that are waiting to be rescued. They haven't eaten, haven't drank any water, so a lot of people are in real <coughs> distress. The, Today, I humbly ask for the help of the BISD staff and students as possible to help get food, medicine, towels, soap, insect repellents, and other items of extreme necessity for these poor people in that state of Tabasco. We have a 45-foot trailer at 1934 Central Boulevard where were the former Brownsville Teachers Credit Union, you may recall, it's very close to the stale and base area, to take whatever goods we can get in this trailer that you can donate or the people in Brownsville can donate, to take them to Villahermosa, Tabasco. I've been in contact with the Mexican consul, and he is very supportive of this effort. So I thank you for allowing me to come before you. May God bless. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. That's a worthy, worthy adventure. Uh, proceed on to Samuel Torres. I think they just signed in going once. Samuel Torres going twice, three times. The last one, AOBE, the famous president, Alberto Alguire. 
Proceed. We're, we're going to have to send you back to school. <laughs> Why can't you have an easier name? That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> I, said, I said Albert correct, didn't I? That, that's, that's all right. <laughs> Sir, I apologize. <laughs> I just had a rough day. No, I just... Good evening, uh, <laughs> good evening, members of the board, Vice President Power, Superintendent Gonzalez, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alberto Alegria, the proud president of the of the Association of Brownsville Educators, affiliated with Texas State Teachers Association and the National Education Association. We're presently 2,500 members strong here in BISD. First, I would like to extol the board for collectively voting to increase our superintendent's salary, a good gesture for his proven labors. We, the Association of Brownsville Educators, can only marvel on the hope that we, the district, employees can obtain an, equ an equivalent salary increase, of course, percentage-wise, that, that, that will reflect the hard, labors, hard labor of our employees as we prepare, prepare a dialogue on the salaries. On Saturday, October the 13th, I was privileged to be invited to the University of Texas at Brownsville and sit on the No Child Left Behind panel and forum consistent of educators, parents, and BIZ students, professors from UTB, UTSA, and UT Pan American. The topic was No Child Left Behind and the High Stakes Testing. As the 2007 Congress prepares to consider reauthorization of the ESEA, or the No Child Left Behind Act, my thoughts about No Child Left Behind high stakes testings were confirmed. I listened with dismay to, to experts in education explaining how detrimental the tax testing was for our students, parents, school administrators. It made me recognize that we were headed in the wrong direction. I listened to parents' concerns about rigorous preparation that they go through before and during their child's testing. I couldn't help but, but panic in thinking that one test, one failed subject, would keep a student from, promo from promotion, sending the parent on a downward, downward spiral psychologically. We heard a student talk about the anxiety to pass a high stakes test in order to be considered prepared and acceptable for promotion. We, the Association of Brownsville Educators, TSTA and NEA, believe it's time for a change. The No Child Left Behind Act of 2001 establishes praiseworthy goals, high standards, and accountability for the learning of children. However, the law must be fundamentally improved, and federal lawmakers need to provide adequate funding if No Child Left Behind is to achieve its goals. Our local, state, and national associations continue to be the forefront advocates of the effort to improve the No Child Left Behind Act. We have developed a compreh comprehensive positive agenda for the ESEA reauthorization that spells out detailed recommendations to make the law better. Our association will focus on three priority areas in working with local, state, and national lawmakers as it considers the reauthorization of No Child Left Behind. One, we need to use more than tests than test scores to measure students' learning and school performance. Two, we need to reduce class size to help students learn. And three, increase the number of highly qualified teachers in our schools. The Department of Education has recognized problems in the existing law and introduced changes that provide some needed flexibility to certain regulations. Therefore, one of the most important regulation is adequate, equitable, and sustainable funding. School funding system must provide adequate, equitable, and sustainable funding. Making taxes fair and eliminating ineffective and inefficient business subsidies are essential prerequisites to achieving adequate equity and stability in school funding. The EESEA programs should be fully funded at their authorized levels. In conclusion, we believe the changes made so far are steps in the right direction, but more significant changes are needed in order to make the law workable and effective. We hope you will join us by urging our elected representatives in Congress to support legislative proposals that will improve No Child Left Behind. 
The pendulum has swung too far to the right with no solid results. And now we must guide it academically and let momentum bring it back to the center point where we can nurture and reconstruct our disregarded past. And uh, in, in adding to what Mr. De Leon was saying, the Association of Brownsville Educators will, will pledge $100 to his cause. I know that what those people are going through in, in, in Tabasco and Chiapas is, is devastating. So I hope that we listen to Mr. De Leon and follow his, his, uh, his words and, and go out there to the uh, Central Boulevard uh, location and, and donate as much as we can. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, Albert, and thank you for your generosity. All right, we'll proceed on to item 9, closed meeting at pursuit to Texas Government Code section 551074551.082A, level 3 board grievance, grievance, 6, level 3 grievance, KD Gomez, number 008-07-08. <coughs> Board reconvenes after closed meeting. Item 7, board action on level 3 grievance, Kathy Gomez, 008-07-08. Do I have a motion? Mr. Powers, uh, move to uphold uh, level 2. Second. We have a second motion by Mr. Lehman, second by Mr. Aguilar. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. Powers, just let the record reflect that uh, I recuse myself from the deliberations. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Motion carries. I'll proceed on to, I have received a list from my colleagues indicating that there's no need for discussion or deliberation on the following agenda items. A, regarding the approval of the following general function items. A, 8, 9, we're already done 12. B, recommend approval of the following payments, 13, 14. C, recommend the approval of the following budget items, 15, 16, 17. D, recommend the approval of the following contracts and agreements, 18, 19. Under 11 closed meeting, 8 personal matters, uh, A21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Can entertain a motion by the board that's approved by the recommendation of uh, the administration. We've got a motion by Mr. Cortez, second by Mr. Aguilar. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We proceed to item number 10. Recommend the approval of the contract of Walsh, Anderson, Brown, Slush, Aldridge, PC with the additional change to include the paralegal rate of $85 an hour. Mr. Lehman. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Powers. Uh, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, on this item, I, I know we reviewed uh, or I reviewed the contract and that was omitted, but in the initial uh, proposal by um, Walsh, Anderson, Brown, Schultz, and Aldridge, uh, do we know for a fact that that was the amount stipulated, or I thought it was a lesser amount? Mr. Pars. Oh, proceed, Mr. Gonzalez. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pars, members of the board. Yeah, on their proposal, I really don't recall because that was not something I, I, I really look at because it was a, it's supposed to be an RFQ, not an RFP. So we really had to select the best qualified first before we can negotiate. Once we got to the contract part of it, the way the contract was submitted and approved did not have any paralegal fees whatsoever. It only had the main fees for the attorneys. So at this time, uh, when they submitted paralegal fees, I, I told them that that was not covered under the under the uh, contract that we had signed. So therefore, it had to come back for approval for you all. Under the proposal that they submitted, that was on their own. They had nothing to do with the request for a proposal because it wasn't a request for a proposal. It was a request for RFQs, which was a qualification. So based on that, the contract was approved. So we're at liberty to, uh, I don't know, Mr. Saldana represents his firm, which is Walsh Anderson. And I don't know whether they submitted with the intent of 75 or 85. I, I don't recall that. But I do believe this much that paralegal fees are good because they do a lot of the legwork. 85 or 75, whatever it would have been, which is, I think they're submitting 85 is a lot better than 160 for legwork, for paralegals. So uh, I know they, they use them for a lot of things, write letters, write responses, and do things like that, and that's a much better rate than the 160. So to be honest with you, uh, Mr. Lehman, members of the board, I don't recall the initial proposal as it was submitted because I was looking at the RFQ more than anything else, but uh, 85, 
is is better than 160. Well, I mean, for paralegals, but, but because the the wording says additional change, so they're changing what. Uh, the, because the contract did not have any paralegal fees in. Well, to be added. Yes, to be added. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I just want to clarify that. Mm -hmm. I, I did notice that mm -hmm. I, I was at your office and I did look at the contract and I, I, I brought that to the attention that that was omitted. So uh, I know we've already made an adjustment and now we're going to make another one. So is this the last adjustment to that contract? From what I understand, that is it. I read it myself and, and okay. this, this is the only thing that would be left over. All right. Mr. Cortez. I'd move to approve it. Okay, okay. I have a motion. I'll Second. accept uh, by Mr. Cortez. Second by Ms. Aguilar. In favor, raise your right hand. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. All right. We'll proceed on to item 11. In consideration and possible action on resolution 014-07-08, changing trustees' terms, including any one-time adjustments to current trustees' terms, and transition to four-year and a biennial election cycle in order to comply with the mandatory requirements for joint biennial elections with Cameron County in even number years. Mr. Lehman. Uh, I just want to know what the uh, recommendations given to us by, uh, I didn't circle that one, but I'll take it anyway. Oh. Well, um, the administration ain't going to recommend I anything. I know, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what, what's your recommendation. I, I'm just going to, no. I'll just take it over and I'll just talk to Mr. Gonzalez about okay. it. Okay. Uh, what is A, B, or C? Okay. Not now, I, 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 I want to clarify that I, I brought the issue up on, on, on uh, since we're lopsided 5-2, that it would be uh, probably more conducive to have a 4-3 uh, balance as far as uh, four individuals running or trustees in, uh, in, as opposed to five, and then two, uh, in this case, having three now. So having a 4-3 uh, Mm -hmm. Staggered, uh, we're probably more conducive, probably less uh, mm -hmm. uh, politically. Uh, mm -hmm. How would you say, for the lack of another word, uh, it, 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 for consistency and continuity. Thank you very much. Those were the words I was looking for. <laughs> so anyway, I made the gesture that uh, I would be willing to shorten my term uh, a one-time counselor, which is permissible by law. Of course, you asked me to resign, and I'm not going to resign. <laughs> I would never ask you to resign, Mr. Lehman. Let's. Well, I'll go ahead and hear. Quoted by the Herald, too. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> according to the Herald, so just on the record, are. so I'm willing to do that, and I'll give back the, the one year that I gave up that I took. I'll give back two, so with interest, again. I'm actually giving back half a year. Here, here's what we have, and I'll go. I'll go ahead and read it for you. For my <laughs> option A. Uh, we all five of us run in uh, November 07, and then we run four years later. 08. 08, I'm sorry. With, 08. with, with four year November terms. November 08, with four year terms. That's uh, positions three through seven. Three through seven, correct. Option B, uh, November 08, all five run, position three through seven, but one board member goes runs in 010, a two year term. So whoever's running in that position, Mr. Lehman voluntarily accepted. Uh, would go from 08 to 010. Two-year term. It'll be a two-year term. And I'll be running with Dr. Scoveather and my favorite colleague over there. <laughs> now, option C, it's the same scenario. All five of us run position three through seven from uh, in November 08. But on option C, two board of trustees run on calendar year 010. Uh, so really, what we need to look at our colleagues here is which plan is best. I, I I like B better than anything else, but uh, I'll go I'll go to the left. Well, I'm on, I'm on record as sacrificing myself. So I'll oh, yeah, to we're going to do that to you. Don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> Which would be what position, Mr. Lehman? That would be position no, four. I am position four, four, sir, not three, as you show there. Uh, this is just an example. Okay. And your position four, Mr. Cortez. Do you have any uh, questions yeah, I, on? I just have one question. Proceed. If it's if it's legal, ask my <laughs> Sadania. On uh, the resolution. Uh, the last paragraph, Mr. Solania, uh, talks about submitting all changes uh, to the U.S. Department of Justice for preclearance. <coughs> We've not been pre-cleared yet. That that has not been. No, we have not because we have not made a decision yet. It's okay. only when the plan is in place, as to already we've taken part one, which is to set the election. Part two is going is this part, which is to adjust the terms and 
uh, and uh, and change to a from a three to a four year term. When all of that is complete, we then make our submissions to to justice, okay. and they issue their pre clearance letter. Okay. And uh, do you expect any complications with? I mean, regardless of whether we go with Plan A, B, or C. No, sir, I do not. I have already seen uh, the requirements of the pre-clearance letter. Uh, they have the, they have uh, basically uh, placed out a questionnaire or a form, and all of the questions that they ask in that have nothing to do with the term adjustments or who you're going to run your election with. They all have to do with the federal federal civil rights and and the federal uh, voting rights act, which uh, focus on, for example, if a two-year member uh, was in a minority, was would there be a situation where there would be an is an instance of, of discrimination in setting the low the the, the shorter terms? Uh, or is this going to impact the voting uh, rights of a particular identifiable class? Those type of voting rights issues are what the federal government consider as opposed to the me mechanics of the election, which are the ones that are considered by the state. Uh, so, so if you all take care of the me mechanics here, I don't anticipate due to the location where we are at and the makeup of our community that there are going to be any uh, uh, voting rights issues uh, as identified by the uh, Department of Justice. Thank you. Mr. Regular. Do you have any questions, Mr. Aguilar? No, uh, I was just looking at option uh, C. Now there you, you will have two, uh, two candidates running for two-year terms, right? Yes, sir. But eventually it will be 4-3, uh, eventually. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. well, Mrs. Galan? Yeah, I guess that, that was my question eventually. On uh, C it would be 4-3, on B it would be? 3-4, yeah. So it's still going to have 4, no matter you go B or C. 3 or 4. Mr. Kalunga, any questions? Uh, preferable to the, uh, for, uh, for the sake of what uh, has been always uh, the uh, the basis for the uh, the election would be continuity and and uh, stability on the board too. So I would uh, favor a, a four three either. Um, uh, B or C. Well, I think we all agree that we want to go four three. So it's just a matter we want four one time or three next time. So uh, did I, did I entertain a motion by anybody with uh, Mr. Lehman. You're the expert. Well, no, I'm <laughs> I'm the one that spearheaded this, and I got blamed for it. Now I'm giving it back. Okay, so what's so, your motion? So I mean, I'm if I don't have any takers. <laughs> I, it's only Mr. Gilad and Mr. Colunga really that can they can adjust, uh, yeah. and you, Mr. Powers, yeah, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm not holding anybody. Okay. I, I'm just doing it because in my heart I felt that four years was the way to be uh, or the way to go, and, and uh, to have uh, stability and continuity at the district. Uh, I think, uh, and I speak for all superintendents that, uh, and I heard it from uh, Mr. Moses. He wanted six years, and he was the, uh, he was a superintendent and the uh, commissioner. Commissioner of Education, so he sees the 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 the, the urgency for 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 superintendents to have continuity and and to depoliticize the uh, the issue uh, up here. So uh, that's why uh, I opted to uh, right. to go four years, and in this case, to have a more balanced uh, uh, three to four, 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 three, whatever you want to call it, uh, I'm stepping up, and I'm I'm, I'm I made that comment uh, a month ago, and I, I still hold by it that I'll. Uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll cut my term two years to to have that continuity. Well, that, that's honorable, Mr. Lehman. So, you want to make the motion for option B with position four to your term? I'll make a motion to uh, to select uh, with the backup information to select B, option B. With position uh, four. With position four, the with two position years. four, Pat Lehman uh, taking a short term of two years, and after that, being consistent with whatever the law is. Okay. Do I have a second? Second it. Second, Mr. Galvan. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Powers, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, just for the record, uh, we are going to have to redo this resolution and bring it back 
in final form. Correct. Okay. Now that we know what we're going to do, right. because we, we're going to need to put that right. language, and that's what part of what needs to be submitted. Correct. Right. So the next time we'll see this will probably be at the next 16th, uh, the okay. 16th uh, with the recommendation of administration, Third. and it'll be in final form uh, for your final adoption. Let, let me just make one comment. I know that we've, this subject has been around for a while now, uh, but we have finally gotten a agreement by all of the parties that are out there, the Secretary of State, uh, the Attorney General's Office, uh, a lot of the guidelines that are in effect now finally in, this, in these last two or three months have finally gelled together and we're getting some consistency now and, and we, everybody knows now what uh, all the questions have been answered so to speak and so uh, everybody's finally on the same page it did take some time a lot of what appeared to be conflict here was actually because there was conflict at the state level the the secretary of state didn't know was in disagreement with the attorney general and the legislature ended up having to kind of fix up things a little bit and so it was all of those issues that were causing issues here. Uh, and finally, everyone's on the same page. And hopefully, the, the, this final resolution that comes on the 16th will be the final word on this thing. Councilor, I, I forgive you. Now, the vote was unanimously. You, you saw that. And uh, I know this has been very cumbersome on, on administration and the attorneys. I think you all made our job a lot easier in selecting what we we're going to do. So you all have the green light now to bring the final resolution. So, and it'll thank, be on the twentieth, pardon me. The twentieth. Thank you very much. Well, you got any, you got any? Uh, I don't have anything close to me. Legal, we have anything close? Okay. That's it. Uh, I'm going to go on to. Okay. There's nothing in closed meeting. I go on to announcements. Our next scheduled board meeting, the board of trustees, is on Tuesday, November twentieth, two thousand and seven, on the administrative <coughs> building at five thirty. I have a motion to adjourn. Hey. Mr. Aguilar, second. Second. Second, by all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion Aye. carries. Aye.